the deep south one of the most notorious regions in the united states some say it's a small area others say that its influence is much larger it's known for having a large african-american population but it also has some of the lowest incomes a region that's plagued with poverty as well as high unemployment however the most resounding artifact of this region is its affiliation with the confederate memorials in every analytical category possible the deep south has the worst analytics in the united states take unemployment in 2023 where unemployment rates are at record low levels some parts of mississippi still have unemployment rates as high as 14 percent the deep south has the highest murder rates of any region of the united states with entire states like alabama mississippi and louisiana having murder rates for the entire state that would be considered high for a large city some counties of northern florida that are part of the deep south have vaccination rates as low as 30 percent the deep south also has a region near southern alabama that has the lowest life expectancy of anywhere in the entire country when it comes to education standards the region also has the worst education in the entire country take jefferson county in northern florida in the florida assessment test this county only got two percent higher than the deaf and blind only about one in five students was actually able to pass the test in this deep south county of florida the deep south begins somewhere around odessa and midland texas and it stretches as far as richmond virginia the biggest bond that holds this region of the country together is its horrific analytics in absolutely every category possible you could think of many people consider the jazz music the barbecue food and other regionalistic traits or subcultures to be the identifying factor in determining what the deep south is on our channel we have extensively traveled the deep south and while the southern region of the united states has beaches along the gulf coast the appalachian mountains and many other great cultural aspects when you enter the deep south you enter a region of gloominess depression hospitality is marked with bad service whether you're dealing with restaurants or you're dealing with hotels nobody here seems to care about other people or providing the best they can in fact in many regions people try to be as hostile and as unaccommodating as they possibly can be dragging their feet at workplaces delays and complacency as the trademark of individuals predominant qualities these states groom their confederate cemeteries while their schools are falling apart jim crow era laws are still in effect and individuals here whether black or white believe in the segregation of races and as you enter some of these deep south areas you may notice that individuals here whether black or white profess a desire to be separate not willing to integrate they hold on to the hate of the past bitter and resentful when tourists from other parts of the country or other parts of the world travel to the deep south they're amazed by how undeveloped how bitter and just how nasty the people in this part of the country are in fact many people who travel the united states avoid this region altogether some of the cultural aspects of the deep south do attract tourists from other parts of the world like england or brazil who fantasize about the south that they believe exists based off of music based off of movies and based off of popular culture hank williams sang about a beautiful place in the deep south 
the state of Alabama glorified in music and cinema. However, when tourists from international sites visit the state of Alabama today, they find out that the Alabama that was glorified in music and country folklore is far from the reality that's currently present on the ground. Small towns are vacant. The people rarely seem to venture outside. Reclusive and worry of outsiders, the notion of southern hospitality, which was once a trademark of this region, has been replaced with a sad, depressing, and sometimes even hostile service. What for many was once entering a region of adventure, today is entering a region of fear. The cities that haven't lost population are more utilitarian than they are decorative. What little industry does exist are the ones that are the most impactful to the environment that degrade the communities they are in the most. Poultry farms and paper mills that stink the air. The air itself becomes foul and repulsive and while the locals have become accustomed to it, if you've never been to the deep south, the first time you encounter a paper mill or a poultry farm you'll know right away how disgusting the smell is. In this region of the country, no consideration is given to aesthetics and the exploitation of natural resources is seen as a sustainable form of economy. Places like coastal Texas, the contamination has become so bad that many people have had to flee due to asthma or other respiratory complications. In their uneducated state, they have no consideration for the ecological impacts that these types of industries have on the states they're in. They actually pride themselves in how destructive and careless these practices are. And while the adjacent areas are vastly suffering from poverty, they're very content with these low paying jobs that destroy their environment because the region is so affordable. This affordability comes from the fact that despite that region having economical benefits like its centralized location in the United States, a connecting point from the west to the busy northeast, these regions are still unattractive for people moving. The area is also marked by abandonment of businesses as the area becomes so unattractive that even the people that are from here are starting to leave. Further to the north of the Deep South, from Fayetteville, Arkansas, into parts of Tennessee, and up into Raleigh, North Carolina, is a ring of success, a region that's growing parallel to the misery that's plaguing the Deep South. The states in this region, like Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, and South Carolina, also happen to have some of the highest incarceration rates that you're going to find anywhere in the United States. The states of Alabama and Mississippi brag about having the lowest homeless rate in the entire country. However, when you see the size of their prison population, we can all assume where their homeless population resides, especially considering that these states are arresting their homeless people. The prison industry is so large in Alabama that many entire rural communities actually depend on jobs stemming directly from an economy that revolves solely around these prisons. Not only the legitimate jobs that these prisons provide for the people of rural Alabama, but there's also a massive underground economy that revolves around smuggling contraband into these prisons, where guards can get paid as much as $2,000 for every single phone they smuggle and are usually being able to do this four to five times a week. The inmates then go on to live entire social media lives from within prison walls. From visits from females to any type of contraband that they want, everything can be obtained in the Alabama's corrupt prison system. It is noteworthy to mention that the vast majority of inmates are African American and that the communities that are bringing in all this revenue from the prisons, whether it's legitimate or illegal, are rural white areas that are profiting heavily from the destruction of the black communities. Cities like Jackson, Mississippi and Birmingham, Alabama 
that have some of the highest murder rates in the United States are funding the lavish lifestyle of rural people in Alabama who work and profit off of the prison system. Birmingham, Alabama's murder rate is four times higher than the city of Chicago, and despite the city being about 80% African American, the white people that work in Birmingham, being the minority of the population, actually bring home four times more income than the average black person. So despite Birmingham being a predominantly African American city, all of the high paying jobs in management go to the white population. Montgomery, Alabama is home to about a quarter million people in its metropolitan area, has nowhere to legally dispose of paint cans or televisions. In any of the landfills within this region, most of these hazardous chemicals end up on the side of the road or in creeks and rivers. Since there's no legal avenue to recycle or dispose of these items, that there means that the city of Montgomery, in theory on paper, has zero contamination, but in reality, despite the fact if it doesn't exist on paper, it exists in real life, that is the mentality of people in the deep south. As long as it doesn't exist on paper, we're good to go, but in reality, these items still exist, and simply because you don't collect them, that doesn't mean they're not out there. And many of the so-called advancements that Alabama has made recently are nothing more than manipulating analytics or distorting material evidence to make it appear as if things were moving in the right direction, but in reality, the complete opposite is the truth. In the 1800s, the Deep South was the richest region in the United States for its fertile soil, perfect weather. This region of the United States gained world acclaim for its wealth and its prominence during the area of antebellum. Today, the only time this area really makes headlines is if there's a natural disaster. The Deep South has recently become the new tornado alley, and even large cities like Montgomery and Birmingham have now had direct hit from tornadoes. Today, there really isn't much positive that can be said about the region of the Deep South. The cities are empty, they're not prospering, and all of the worst things that could happen to a place are taking place here on a massive scale. The black population says that they're not going to work too hard because they used to be slaves, and the white population says if they don't want to work, neither are we, and now nothing gets done in this region of the country. Exploiting the system and living off the government has become a way of life for many people in the Deep South. Whether it's living in Section 8 or government housing, many others fake a disability so they can obtain benefits from the government. Those who work want to get paid in cash because they don't want to lose their food stamp benefits. This region is now known for having some of the worst work ethics of anywhere in the United States where people prefer to get Section 8 or get food stamps and live off the government or try to obtain a false disability so they don't have to work. Hispanics and Asians that have moved to this region almost certainly end up having to leave as the hostilities and racial tensions make them victims both of criminals and law enforcement. Inspectors demand large bribes and even then they give these businesses excessive violations until they're driven out of business, which is why many businesses haven't moved into this region. They know the liability they take not only with the employees who many times injure themselves in the workplace, don't show up on time. It's a horrible region of the country to do business where the employees quickly become liabilities and the good old boy system dictates who's allowed to do business and who gets ran out of town. And this includes larger corporations as well, not just small businesses. For these reasons and many more, the Deep South continues to be the nightmare region of the United States, a place that's feared and that's holding itself back, refusing to let go of the hate from the past, and continuing in its long and painful journey of self-destruction.
and despite the appearance of poverty, massive fortunes are made here. If you're aligning yourself with the right players, the game is rigged up and the earnings are lucrative. And the players always have a poker face, pretending like they're starving, like they're going through difficulty. But deep down, all the pockets are well aligned. And one of the biggest misconceptions outsiders have of this region is the blanket poverty theory that everyone here lives in poverty. However, you should know that in reality, there are a lot of very wealthy people in the deep south. They're just really good at being able to conceal it because if they're openly showing and flaunting their wealth, could easily make them a target of crime, leaving them vulnerable to bribes and extortions. And while a lot of people, if not the vast majority, do live in abhorrent poverty, if you look a little bit closer in the deep south, you might recognize that some people are very clever. No-go zones of the deep south is flaunting your wealth. Most people who have money do a good job to conceal it. The deep south continues to be a place that misleads many and the disguises for most of us. We'd like to think we understand them, but it continues to be one of the most misunderstood regions of the country. If you listen to these people in the Deep South, you'd almost believe they're moving in the right direction now. But if you look at the analytics, you'll see that crime is on the increase more than ever. Regions of Texas that in the past had more attractive analytics are starting to see an increase in crime, difficulty with unemployment rates. In analytical categories like homelessness and overdose deaths, this region of the South wasn't the worst, but in recent analytical information coming out, there's starting to be an increase in those categories as well, which just goes to show the general decline that this area is facing. While many people were attracted to this region during the COVID times for affordability, they're starting to find out that there's a reason why this area was affordable, and while obtaining property and real estate may be cheap, the living conditions that your family is going to face in this region of the country isn't excused by the price tag. And that, my friends, is the Deep South region of the United States. Absolutely the worst place to live in the United States. Only Appalachia has areas and statistics that are as bad as the Deep South. And many people who've moved to this region for affordability are finding out that you can't really put a price tag on your freaking life. So while the boundaries of the Deep South can be disputed, undoubtedly, what won't be disputed is how bad of a region it is and how horrible the conditions are for the people living here. Many of them are not even aware. They've become used to this type of poverty and complete marginalization. But for the rest of us who know better, even traveling to this region is a complete nightmare.